Hey guys, before this video starts, I just wanted to quickly mention that we're going to be doing a Halloween live stream on October 31st, Halloween night, um, starting at around 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I, Alex, am going to be playing Friday the 13th, Costume Quest 2, and South Park. So make sure you join us on Podcast Now at YouTube.com. Um, we're going to be live streaming that night, just playing those three games, having some fun. I'll be talking to you guys through live stream, anything you want to talk about, just uh, you know, a nice little hang out to celebrate Halloween together so I will see you guys there what's up everybody welcome to podcast now I'm Alex and I'm joined by Tyler and we're here to give you our tips and tricks for Assassin's Creed origin so this is another video we're doing for Assassin's Creed uh, where we're gonna kind of talk about what we think you guys should know about the game going in uh, tip and trick fashion as we always do we're gonna run through six things that we think can give you guys an edge uh, going into Assassin's Creed origins number one is what I did pretty much right away very extremely important alternative controls Change, if you're having a hard time. I had a super hard time as soon as I was doing the, the fighting on PS4. As soon as I went to the options menu, changed the control settings to alternative, man, it was so much better. Um, it reminded me way more of classic, like, f not classic fighting games, but like um, The Witcher and countless other um, games where light attack is square, heavy attack is triangle, parry or dodge or whatever is circle. That's what it changes it to on PS4. I don't remember. I don't know what it is for Xbox. Um, running or like um, free running moves from X to R2, which is way more natural. Interacting with things to pick things up. So it just the controls that it comes with out of the box or on digital, very odd. Uh, just way better with alternative control. So I highly recommend just trying it to see if you like it. But don't you know? Don't give up right away because it's gonna be hard at first to get used to it. So the second tip and trick we have is to do uh, side quests. So side quests, they're going to be all over the place. This is a massive, massive map. It's a massive game, and there's a lot to do in it. Uh, so doing side quests is obviously very important. I know, you know, once you get into a game like this, you may be kind of uh, pressured or put in the position where you just want to do story mission after story mission, progress the game, get to new areas. But doing side quests not only give you experience points, which will get you uh, new levels, which will give you ability points that we'll talk about in a second, uh, but also gives you weapons, gives you the ability to loot a whole lot more than you would if you just did the story mission, and opens you up to obviously kind of unique things that the game can do uh, with its storytelling and with doing just different things as Bayek. But it definitely helps progress your level, definitely helps you get more uh, items such as weapons, shields, all sorts, crafting materials that you can use later on. So they are very, very important. Make sure you do as many as you possibly can. The third one is manage ability points. You'll kind of guess or like by looking at the ability menu you'll kind of know the direction that you're mainly going to move towards and how you play um, or what you may find useful so the reason i'm saying manage your ability points some people get one ability point and they go like oh my god i gotta spend it right away you don't always <laughs> don't do that <laughs> like sometimes you'll have to you'll have to have two ability points to unlock something that's worth it like that's worth the wait so just because you get an ability point doesn't mean you have to spend it right away. You can apply this to everyday life with cash. But um, I highly recommend you kind of know in your you know in your head, you already kind of figure out like, okay, well, next I'm going to go this route, so I'm going to have to do three, and then I'm going to need two. So I'm going to need a total of, what's that? Five. Yay, we all can do math. Um, so what the reason I'm saying that, though, is sometimes what will happen is... The one that you kind of want, where you need two, you might be two away from, right? So you need three ability points. But then there's one, and let's say that's on the left side. There might be one on the right that there's one ability point, then there's another ability point, like for one ability point. So then all of a sudden you spent two ability points on a totally different side because you needed to spend ability points because you have like a compulsion or something. Now you just delayed yourself from getting the thing that you actually wanted by... Literally, like couple, at least an hour and a half, maybe more. Um, so just really, you know, manage your ability points. Just know you don't have to spend them right away. You will still survive. You'll you'll make it. You'll be able to complete quests without having to without spending um, an ability point as soon as you get it. 
Number four is you send you often. So, you know, you have this bird available to you rather early on in the game. It's given to you and it's a very, very nice bird. Uh, it does a lot of really great things for you. And, and in terms of fighting, in terms of scouting out your area, and that's kind of where we're going to go next with these, uh, you want to use Senyu as often as you possibly can. You're, there's going to be a lot of big environments in this game, whether it be side quests, whether it be just things you kind of walk into, like the question marks, where there's a lot of enemies. And like what we'll talk about, the fighting is very different, and the enemies you know, can get overwhelming, so it's important to know what you're walking into. And uh, so using the bird to be able to scout out the end, it controls a little wonky personally for me, but it does definitely do its job where you can kind of survey the entire surrounding. Uh, you can go up or down with it and it kind of marks where all of the enemies are um, and kind of tells you where they're going to go. So using the bird as often as possible makes it so that you're not getting surprised. You know, you don't want to go into an area and then be caught off guard by another enemy. So it's definitely, you know, like in Metal Gear Solid, how you can mark enemies or in Batman. It's very much this game's tool for doing that, and you want to make sure you're doing that whenever you possibly can. The fifth one is try every weapon class, basically. When you get a new weapon, if it's more powerful than the one that you're currently using, try in a different class, try it. Because if you get the weapon bearer, where you can have two different, like a spear and then the dual swords, or spear and whatever, try out different weapon classes to see what you end up or what you may end up liking. Um, because I was using just a regular sword for a while, and then I switched to something else. I don't remember what. I think it was dual swords. Wasn't really a fan of dual swords. My combat, I wasn't doing as good. Maybe it was just me. But as soon as I switched to a spear, I'm like, oh yeah, this is the one for me. Then I started doing a spear. Then I got something else. I can't remember what it's called, unfortunately. Um, but it's a big staff. You might have seen in the other videos me using it. That's like on fire. Then I, so then I use that because it's a little bit more of like a heavy hitter. So now I combo between the two, but if I never tried, if I just wanted to stick to dual swords because it was cool, but I'm not good at it, then I wouldn't really be enjoying the game as much. Um, or just, you know, doing as well. It would be more frustrating, and that's just not fun. Um, so definitely try out. Don't be afraid to try out things that you might not necessarily think you're going to like. Just try it anyways. Just even, like, if you do one fight and see how it goes. Um, just to... Well, mainly to see you know what the game has to offer and to see what may actually work for you because you just never know. And the sixth, we have a bonus one. Ding, 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 ding. If you're in the gear menu and if you like Bayek to have long hair, like post getting shaved, if you like Bayek with long hair and you like Bayek with a beard, if you hold at least on PS4, so it's probably the same on Xbox, if you hold L2 and triangle, toggles long hair. If you hit it again, it's back to the shaved head. If you do the left trigger button, L2, and then square on PS4, it puts the beard back or not. And you could do either combination. You could do shaved head, beard, long hair, no beard, or long hair and beard like in the beginning of the game. Um, so that's like a little bonus one. I like that. I like having shaved head. I like having a beard. What I don't like, though, is that every time you enter a cutscene, just so you know, every time you enter a cutscene, it reverts back to the regular clean-shaven um, and the buzz cut. So you're going to have to keep switching back and forth. Um, but if you're just, like, roaming around or whatever, or you just don't care. So those are our tips and tricks for Assassin's Creed Origins. Let us know in the comments below if we missed any or if you guys have any tips and tricks that you want to talk about uh, with other people. Uh, put that in the comments below. Again, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Podcast Now. Like and share the video. And we will have a few more Assassin's Creed videos coming up. We'll be having our review and a couple other kind of special videos for the game as this week goes on. So we will see you there. Just to let you guys know, we're going to be doing a Star Wars Battlefront 2 Community Day event on Sunday, November 19th and Sunday, November 26th, where Tyler and I will be playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 1 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we want to play with you. Those who have Star Wars Battlefront 2, we welcome you to play with us. We'll be collecting your names and hopefully being able to get into groups with you. We want to play with you, and we're giving you some incentive to do such. We're going to be giving away one $25 
Fandango gift card to a person that plays with us on each event, as well as one $15 Fandango gift card to somebody who watches us on each event. So both events are going to have one set each of the gift cards, $125 and $115 for events one and two. Again, this is taking place November 19th to the 26th. We hope to see you there.